Keith Horn. I was born in uh, Hopewell, Virginia. I uh, come from a musical family. My dad, a guitar player, and started playing with him when I was actually six years old, playing country. Um, that's what I was first brought up in. And in my teenage years, I started getting into R&B and funk and listened to uh, my biggest bass influences as far as the commercial side was Bernard Edwards and Alan Gorey and Verdeen White from Earth, Wind & Fire. And then when I turned 16, I started hearing about Stanley Clark. And that totally changed my whole bass perspective on bass playing. I uh, was playing, you know, pretty much commercial top 40 bands. And then I happened to get into a band called Secrets, the late 80s, uh, actually the mid 80s. Um, and I learned to uh, play bass mostly on fusion stuff and uh, jazz and some bebop. And uh, ended up just kind of getting tired of being in the Virginia scene. So I ended up moving to Nashville in 1990. And happened to be here just a couple of weeks and got a gig with uh, superstar Tanya Tucker. And I uh, have gone from different artists from country to funk to R&B. And uh, it's, it's all helped me in so many different ways. Uh, I sing a lot of backup. And that's, you know, one reason I've, I think I've got a lot of gigs too. It's just, you know, you singing backup can help you on a lot of different things. And, uh, but also learning to play so many different styles of bass playing. Uh, no matter what it is, I grew up in bluegrass also, and and I learned at a young age basically is laying down the groove for the song, and then if it's your turn to shine, and then you let loose, and you know let them show them what you got. Then I've been been touring for the last 20 years, I like with a lot of various of artists, doing some session work, which I, I love doing. You know, try to do more session stuff in town. Um, I've went through a lot of obstacles um well for one thing playing left-handed upside down is i guess pretty unique um when i was playing drums at the times i started on guitar at six years old went to drums when i was nine and then played uh, bass when i was 12 and i couldn't get a left-handed bass at the time so i started playing a friend of mine's bass upside down and being a right-handed person totally which is really weird but i end up playing all the instruments even including steel guitar left-handed um, but I, the obstacle of playing bass upside down was doing all the thumb stuff uh, at a different, you know, different style than a right handed person could. So um, I, I came up with a lot of my own uh, techniques of my own, I think, to play that way. Um, and there's just more and more guys playing like that. There's disadvantages and the advantages to it too. Um, another thing, probably going to real quick, uh, a lot of people who may know me before, um, uh, went through an obstacle of the whole big weight loss um, in my life. You know, I used to be really heavy, uh, had a surgery years ago, and then got into working out and just feel great. I love it. And I, I think that even helped me in music based playing too. You know, everything comes all health, hand in one and hand in the other. So, yeah, like I said earlier, I, uh, I played, with, played with my dad until I guess I was about 14. Big influence on me. He, he got me started on guitar and, uh, totally different style than I play now, but we, uh, he got me started and I took it from there and some of my guitar influences were Jerry Reed uh, and Roy Nichols from Merle Haggard and James Burton from Elvis. It was probably because I really got really into the chicken picking style of guitar. So they were my main influences. Um, so yeah, then I, when I was playing with him until I was about 14, then I ended up getting in a nine piece horn band. Uh, and then that's when I started learning to play funk bass. Uh, and so that totally brought my whole horizon of bass playing too, as far as groove and, and everything else. Um, so uh, yeah, moved to, to Nashville in 90, um, auditioned for Tanya Tucker. And unfortunately, all the gigs that I've done since then have been offered to me. They've called me, you know, you just kind of get your name around of uh, the different things that you can do. And uh, I ended up getting a call from Frampton in 96 and I played with him for like a tour and that was that was a big highlight because I was a huge fan at 12 years old you know seeing Frampton I mean you know hearing Frampton comes alive so that was a, that was a big highlight of my life to play with him no doubt and I got to play with some other legends like Waylon Jennings who was a big huge country legend growing up for me uh, also was a bass player so we really hit it off I have uh, probably owned just about every bass there is uh, I played, you know, Fenders mostly in the 70s, uh, all in the 80s. 
Uh, I was a big Music Man freak. That's all I would play and had tons of them. Um, I guess late 80s, uh, I started uh, hearing about guys like John Petitucci and some of the big six string players. And I ended up getting a Ken Smith and played those for many years. Uh, I play a lot of Lakeland basses, like in the studio. Um, and then I end up uh, meeting the guys at Warrior at the NAMM show. And it was a bass that I had never played. I mean, just just craftsmanship was unbelievable. And it just brings out everything that you do play-wise. And uh, so I've been with them for almost eight years now. Um, this is my signature bass. Keith Horn signature bass six string. I have a five string called a Matterhorn. Um, and I like a lot of different basses for different styles of music and different kind of gigs. So that's I kind of that's why I've got I guess kind of a big arsenal of basses. Um, but I term I tend to lean towards jazz type basses like a Fender Jazz uh, and like I said Music Man it was another big you know big bass I love to play. So I like the sounds of both basses and that's what I liked about the Lakelands. It was a little bit of both. Um, I've been playing um, Thunder Funk Heads and Acugroove Cabinets for the last six years. Uh, I had played 410 Cabinets for so many years. I love them. Uh, and this Acugroove Cabinet had a whole different sound that I hadn't played through in many years with a 15, a 12, a 6, and two tweeters. So big range of it, the whole the whole bass spectrum. And uh, I've uh, been using Ernie Ball strings for almost 18 years. I love them, just very uh, dependable, uh, the sound's always there, and uh, also I use Mangami cables, very reliable, and I use them for touring and also for studio. My advice for any young players, um, you know, wanting to move to, no matter what city you want to move to, um, basically, I mean, I always say, be able to be prepared to, to be able to play anything. It helps a whole lot too because I mean that just opens your whole spectrum for different kinds of gigs. Um, another thing is to being uh, you know try to be easy as get, get along with as possible and be the very dependable. Um, you know it's uh, it's all especially a lot in Nashville is all the word of mouth and uh, your reputation. You know I know many guys are incredible players and reputation sometimes doesn't do as well as they're playing and then you know they don't do as many gigs so you know your reputation really speaks a lot in, in a town like this so um, but I just you know just try to learn as many styles as possible and and like I said I, I really thrive on like the whole background singing thing if you're able to sing please you know try to hone in on that because it's, it's a big help on gigs you know and, and, and staying on gigs too <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.